to ask you a little bit about how you choose your examples. In the class I observed, you gave a number of really strong examples, and I th I, it wasn't until later that I went, oh, those were like spot on. Mm -hmm. How do you choose your examples to illustrate concepts? So the class that you um, observed, Cheryl, we were talking about social psychology, but we were talking about still research methods, research design, independent variables, dependent variables, some terms that don't always resonate with students. So I like to, again, provide those examples. But being a kinesiology first year kin course, I figured, well, let's provide examples that are relevant to kin, research that they might come across right. as kinesiology students. And what better way than to look around my own college at the research that's going on right here to come up with examples. So thinking of, okay, different faculty on or in the college, what are they up to? Someone's doing something on um, different protein supplements. Someone's doing something on cardiac recovery. Providing those examples. Someone's doing something on body image provide those examples to the students so that they can A, have some solid grounding in the content we're learning, but to also give them a heads up of, hey, this is the type of neat stuff that's going on in the college that you're a part of. Um, in addition, or, or other than just talking about my own research area, which might not always appeal to everyone in the class, so giving them some variety in different examples that stem from their own future professors as they go through the kinesiology program. One of the things we find too with learning is that students often, well, humans do, we keep information in just strict environmental situations and often they're called silos. But in talking about what other instructors and faculty members are doing in your college, you're crossing those. Yeah. And I wonder how that works for students remembering content. Are you noticing anything that way? Well, I think it, it's useful because even, like I said, in this case, we were focused on social psychology, but giving them examples that maybe fall outside of that realm, but are still applicable. So identify the independent variable and the dependent variable, you know, in a strength training program that's meant to impact you know, depression or something, getting them to think a little bit outside the box of just the content, the silo we're focusing on, right. and, and apply it to different areas as well. Thank you.